We are breaking down the NFC South, everyone's favorite division, where the playoffs can be had with a good eight wins. But there is actually a lot of really interesting fantasy players available, and we're going to break it all down for you. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, leave us a comment, and enjoy. Foot Clan, the ultimate draft kit is ready. It is available for you right now. Now, ultimatedraftkit.com. Look, you know you're going to be getting ready for those drafts because those are coming up sooner than you can imagine, just a couple weeks away. Get the work in. Get our sleepers, our breakouts, our busts, our full projections, and these things are getting updated as soon as the news breaks. Get in there right now, ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. With your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Excited to be with you Saturday, July 22nd. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Oh, baby. Jason Moore, Mike Wright. I'm Andy Holloway. The Deucers are here as well. It's a ragtag bunch of Deucers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we took, uh, well, Al, Al Borland's here. The the uh, Rapscallion is here. And then uh -huh. we just found another bald guy. Yeah. Well, like, Brooks had a little too much hair. Oh, so we we had to find someone who had less hair than Brooks, and that's uh, that was a really that's Josh. That was a really quick YouTube cut away from the baldness. <laughs> <I don't laughs> really, you see how shiny it was is? Was there a lot of reflection on the screen? Oh, uh, he's in the back shadows. in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Josh over there. No, we're we're excited to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening to this show. Genuinely, like you're why we do this podcast, and um, that's not lost on us. Like without the listenership, the Foot Clan. Yeah. Uh, we wouldn't get to do what we do, and and you are our, in truth, you're our greatest form of marketing possible. Like we produce this show um, year round, and you telling your friends, your family, um, you know, leaving the reviews, uh, comments on YouTube, all of that stuff, like that, genuinely helps the show. So we it certainly does. We and super appreciate it. We appreciate you, and we appreciate your courage. Let's, uh, you know who doesn't appreciate this show right now? The blades of grass that are getting annihilated because it's Saturday. Oh, because they're out there. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're mowing. They're the mowing the lawn. Unless, Unless they are in yeah. Arizona. Well, <laughs> I mean. Uh, we have to talk about it. <laughs> we, really, right. we do. It's unbelievable. <laughs> um, it is. It's bad. It's real bad. It's so bad that our studio air conditioning is giving up. It's yeah. just saying, it like, has. we can't do this anymore. So, uh, fu a funny aside. Uh, we're looking out in the backyard, and uh, my wife says, "Did the did the broom melt to the grass?" Oh no! Oh no! Oh <laughs> and no! Because so I, one of the kids had left a broom out, uh, and I look out, and the broom definitely looks like it had and I was melted, mm -hmm. and I said. Oh crap! I think you might be right. Luckily, it was not just attached to the grass, like melted but, the plastics yes. together. But the 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 broom, the sweeping part of the broom, was <laughs> very wilted. Yeah, every it, every it, state's got its not every state. Uh, most states have their challenges. Maybe you've got humidity. Maybe you've got blizzards. Maybe you have months where you can't go out and golf. But we're in the thick of our challenges right now. This yeah, is the hottest. Please have some respect for us right now. This is the hottest 20 day stretch in the history of the state. Mm -hmm. We were at uh, two days ago, 119. Our low temperature for the day. How low it got at night? The lowest of the day was 97 degrees. Mm, that's nice. So um, <laughs> I have under this table right now, if you're watching on YouTube, I have a fan blowing on my legs. It's just right it's, here. It's the only way to survive right now. So, um, yeah, have some sympathy. Jason has said a lot of, I would say, just like not. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's pulling the fan I'm out. Like, it's so hot. It's really hot. We are stuck to the chairs, but we are here for you. And we've got another divisional breakdown show uh, for Saturday. Very excited to get into it. We are in the NFC South, and uh, we got a quick question on today's show. 
We've got a live show coming up Saturday, August 26th at the Palace Theater in Los Angeles. If you would like to come and join us, there are uh, there are some seats remaining at BallersLive.com. The uh, the mezzanine is filling. The center is now sold out. Get in there. Yeah, so, yeah it's going to be so much fun. Uh, we've got big things planned. BallersLive.com, the ultimate draft kit. You heard Mike talk about it. Available right now. Prime up for your drafts. Lots of cool tools in there, including the draft analyzer, where we will break down your draft if you're mock drafting and you want to see what we think of the decisions you've made. Plug your team in there, and we will let you know which of us agrees with the decisions you made, the players, and uh, it will help form your strategy for the upcoming drafts. And I will say, I don't know if we've mentioned it on the show, uh, on the podcast or not, when we're talking about the live show. It's really a double show. Because we do, we, we record, you know, the podcast, um, and you, so you can be involved with that, the cheering, and, and a couple mailbag questions. But then once the show is done, we do an entire Q and A where those are entirely the questions from the audience, and then that becomes uh, our special uh, footcast for the, for the week. So it's 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 double double trouble. Yeah, and uh, Jason, you can bring your Gooch fan. Oh, I will have it. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> to uh, to keep you cool, and I patent pending. <laughs> kind of regret saying that. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. Quick question of the day comes from Mark in Sydney. Oh, bonjour. There you go. And let, wait, is there a Sydney in the U.S.? Uh, I would un think. Unlikely. I would say that. <laughs> There's only unlikely. one. I would. I would go very likely. Well, I feel like if you're in the U.S., I'm on it. You would say Mark in Sydney, Ohio. You wouldn't just say Sydney because you know we're going to assume Sydney, Florida. We're we're going to assume Sydney, it's, North it's Dakota the Opera House. Yeah, this is he's he's literally in <laughs> sending us a message from the Opera House. Yes. It could be the bridge. Yeah, Mike's climbed that bridge. I yeah. Know. You, oh my! Shout out to the bridge. Want to talk about problems with your gooch? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> oh man! What? Do you mean like feeling nervous? Oh yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Fear of heights. Yeah. I thought it was like sweat. <laughs> no, no. I'm things things clench. Welcome to the Gooch Cast. Um, <laughs> hey, this one's That's three mentions. We 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 need like a Pee Wee's play. <laughs> it's not a good Saturday has a feel to it, guys. Um, Mark and Sydney. <laughs> hey, ballers. How much do you factor in the other team's improvement when you are making a trade? I.e., the trade will help your team, but will help their team as well. Um, I can jump in. Sure, I I have a I have an answer, and I'm sure Jason does. So. To me, there's there's two types of trades. There, it, which it depends on your league format, of course. If you're in a complete 100% redraft, where you don't keep any players, and this is simply I'm trying to improve my team for right now for this season, and you, I actually I consider it a lot. I because I don't want I don't want trade offers coming to me where I look at them and go, why would I possibly trade away my run. I have two running backs. Why would I trade you one of them and decimate my team? Okay, I improve at my wide receiver position, but it destroys the structure of my team. So I personally do factor it in because I want people to factor it in when they're sending me a trade. But there's also keeper leagues and dynasty trades, and that is the I am sending you a very lopsided offer because I know you don't want to trade this player. So I'm I'm willing to pay up or you know pay the piper, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't consider it. I consider the story. I consider the, the argument of why you should do the deal. So in that sense, I'm looking at your team and I'm finding a, a reason. But I'm not actually – I don't want you to be better as an opponent, not in reality. I want you to believe you're getting better because that's well, how – Well, I think that means you factor in what, yeah, they, what yeah. their team needs are. Yes, I do factor in the team needs to make a strong case for the trade. But um, and I think that's really important to get trades through. So I think we're agreeing. I just the net result is I want the trade to go through for me. Yeah, yeah. I I don't really care. I, I I'm never going to assume someone's going to take a trade if they don't think it helps their team, and they're probably smart enough to know whether or not it does or not. Uh, which means I am trying to improve the other team. I th I think the heart of this question is like, do you worry if a trade improves your team? Like you believe like this trade helps me but I think it helps them even more. Do I not make the trade? And I would say no. Your goal, no as in 
yes, make the trade. Correct. Your yeah. goal is to just keep making your team better and better and better. Other teams, that's their goal. You worry about your team. The only difference, the only time that I hesitate at all is if it's with Andy. Because if you have a Fair. mortal enemy in your league, then okay, okay, maybe this time it's personal. Um, and he is my – in our league of record, we're in the same division. So, Mike, it would be you, I'm sure, if we were in the same division. But it's just the fact that, you know, I fan, fantasy football-wise and specifically league of record-wise, I hate you. And, right. And no. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Deep inside. No, that's uh, – I and I hate you. And I'm so thankful for that. <laughs> Good. That says I'd a lot. Say, I mean that with love. I mean, it, I, I'd consider it if it was like heading right into the playoffs and I knew I was going to face those teams in the playoffs, if it really strengthened them. But otherwise, I agree. I think it's exactly like the idea where people say, well, I'm going to draft two tight ends so that I can, I can go trade one to somebody. Like, you just don't know all the possible outcomes. Like, it just doesn't make sense to, to bank on one team – making them better is going to hurt you. And you don't know. Like, Dynasty, Dynasty, you you don't really the, – the teams are so deep. It's not an obvious – like, everybody has players at every position. So even though there are strengths and weaknesses on your team, you can kind of mix and match a lot more in Dynasty. Picks come into play. Um, teams may have different goals. Like, in that situation, it's harder to know what the team's weaknesses maybe are, but um, you're not going to get trades through if you can't make a story out of it. If you can't paint the picture for somebody. Yeah, I agree. Um, all right. Uh, we don't have uh, very much news to talk about. This is being recorded uh, about a day early than when you're hearing it. So if there's something big that's transpired, we will cover it on Tuesday. Oh, something big happened, Andy. Oh, yeah? What's that? There was a big trade. Oh, boy. The Jets have traded wide receiver Denzel Mims to the Lions. There was a lot of rumors that he was going to get cut. But I guess in the eleventh hour, the Detroit Lions came in, which it's this is a this is a fantastic bet in my opinion for the Lions because it was well like a conditional seventh Mims and a conditional seventh for a conditional sixth. I mean this is absolutely nothing, and they have Jamison Williams who is should be the future of the wide receiver of the, I guess the the field stretching future because Amon Ra is there, uh, but he's suspended for six games because of the uh, the gambling situation so they need someone else and, and Marvin Jones is he's a little bit older so Mims it, I, I would say it's it's fair to say at this point Mims is not going to turn into the player that we had hoped he was a second round pick he's I liked very, him a lot yeah he's well he's big he's very athletic but the Jets have seen enough to say that he's he's clearly not a future but for the for the Lions to just rent a player who can run a nine route really, really fast and be tall? It's a great move. Who is the uh, who's the Lions receiver from last year that kept catching touchdowns? TJ Turk? No, that was one of them. Who? Oh, Khalif Josh Raymond. Reynolds? Khalif Raymond. Yeah. Raymond. That's that's it. Khalif Raymond. Um, yeah, if you have those guys that can go make a play here or there, like his best storyline possibility as a player at this point because he didn't prove himself in New York is the Brashad Perryman type of narrative. Yeah. Like, come in and make an impact at some point. It's weird because like Mims didn't get a real shot and we liked him and Elijah Moore didn't really get a real shot last year and, and a lot of people like him. So it's weird that the Jets would jettison those guys, jettison those hey. guys. But um, also Brees Hall, Randall Cobb, CJ Uzama, all on the pup to start camp can be activated at any time. This was to be expected. This is not new information with Brees Hall, but when you hear it, you're like, Oh no! Yeah, new as in you'd expected it to be the case. right. Yeah. yeah, this this is it's new as in they actually did it, but it's not new as in exactly uh, a setback or something. Correct. Let's get divisional. <laughs> uh, just looking at the um, standings from the NFC South last year, I'm just. I'm laughing because it's this the, is it's the mucky muck. It really it's the swamp, man. Um, we're looking at these divisions. We've been going through the breakdowns. Tampa Bay won. <laughs> Tampa Bay lost the division. <laughs> they were the first place losers with a negative forty five point differential. Oh my! Which goodness. which was the most in the division at eight and nine. As in the most negative. <laughs> so they were the yeah that was the the playoff. 
the Buccaneers. playoff Buccaneers were eight and nine. The Panthers, Saints, and Falcons were seven and ten. The point differential in this division, everybody was negative. Um, and yet all four had a shot to make the playoffs as late as week seventeen. You know, I was I was uh we were working on the YouTube thumbnail for this episode. And I'm sitting there going like uh, who do I put up on that thumbnail? Because there there aren't elite fantasy options, not a lot of them, not like a normal, like a, some of these divisions we've gone through. There are young rookies that... Sophomores. Rookies or sophomores that are like emerging talents. But when you talk about... Some, there isn't a, somebody that's gone out and established themselves for fantasy. There are players that we know will, like Bijan. There are players with immense talent like Pitts and Olave, but you've got Bryce Young, a rookie quarterback. You've got Miles Sanders changing divisions, who's been inconsistent. You've got Drake London, who's been inconsistent, and you have so you've got youth, but you don't have stalwarts in this division, and it's weird. Well, you got the the old guys, but they've in Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, but they've yeah they've uh, moved from Tom Brady to probably Baker Mayfield. Yeah, I mean the win total for the Buccaneers as we start this divisional breakdown was eleven and a half last year. Now, they did win the division, but it's down to six and a half this year with the departure of Tom Brady. And, and, and there's no way – I mean, nobody believes that Baker will play 17 games, right? Uh, I, I just can't imagine that. I, they're going to lose so many games. They're going to – it's going to be one of those situations where you just are forced to throw things at the wall and make changes for changes' sake, even if they still believe right. that Baker is the best option in week eight when they're two and six. Yeah, you don't stay as a starting quarterback – if you lose that many games, yeah, you just don't because it, at some point in time you try something new. Yeah, and you go say we're gonna trask to the number one pick. Possible, and, and but that being said, eight and nine won you a division. And so, eight, eight, so could if, Baker get you to eight? Maybe. And this year, eight might do it again. <laughs> it might. So they if were seven might do it. Jason. They were rough last year, twenty fifth in points per game, despite being second in pace of play. And so, you know, they threw the ball 751 times. That was insane. I mentioned it the other day in the Tennessee breakdown. That's 20 times more than the Titans threw it per game. This year is going to be different. It just is. Tom Brady's not running the show. The pace of play is going to be different. You're going to have to depend more on your offense or on your defense because your identity, you can't come back the way that you could before. Uh, you know, Todd Bowles, good luck. Baker yeah. Mayfield, Chase Edmonds, new additions. Tom Brady and his $35 million counting against the cap. They have the most dead cap money in the entire NFL, $74 million. This looks like a full reset year. I mean, what what kind of is troublesome about that, and we can we can start with the wide receivers, is that, you know, Godwin and Evans are still very, very talented wide receivers. If they were in a better situation, we would be very excited about their potential. For sure. I but mean, that but that storyline is what we said about Metcalf and Lockett last year, and we were surprised. Yeah. So you, you can say, okay, we've seen let, – let's paint the uh, rosier picture because my, my current projection is extraordinarily pessimistic. I'll spoil and say that I think the Buccaneers are going to finish last in this division. But there is an outlook here where you say, well, Godwin, not only just Godwin, but he's 27 years old and he's now in year two from a pretty – uh, devastating knee injury. He, we weren't believing he would be back by week one last year. He was. So he should be at his best, like peak Godwin. And you've got Mike Evans, who's obviously a, a dominant force, has never not had a 1,000-yard season. And Baker Mayfield, while he has been terrible lately, you know, the one point in time he was the future of the NFL, and that wasn't that long ago. So if he could put it together – there is a rosy outlook here where they can be okay. I think uh, – I don't believe PFF's rating on this offensive line. I think the offensive line is going to be a massive problem. What, if, where do they have it? I think they've got them at 14 projected for this season. It's definitely healthy. Yeah, I mean, it, they, they they lost some pieces last year to injury, but they, they've lost some pieces from that unit uh, that they finished the season with last year as well. So, t to me, I don't think – that with this offensive line, Baker or Trask can get the job done regardless of the weapons. Hopefully you have a Geno Smith-style uh, 
surprise, and if that happens, they, they could win the division. But I've got them finishing last. And it's a surprise for a reason. It, you know what I mean? It's not the expectation because generally that doesn't happen. So you're right. I mean, it could be Baker and Kyle Trask, which casts some shade on Evans and Godwin's potential. Let's try to find some diamonds in the rough here. Where, you know, Rashad White is going in the seventh round, running back, third round pick, capable pass catcher, wasn't good on the ground last year, but you can chalk a lot of that up to kind of abysmal play as as a team altogether. I mean, we watched Tom Brady's 751 pass attempts. Um, I'm not sure that their air yards on those pass attempts were further than where Rashad White was running. No. So um, could it could it be better, more efficient for Rashad White another year into the league, the opportunity, the pass catching? I think that's possible. I think I think he could – you know, Carolina wasn't a great football team last year, but you had Deonta Foreman that had a year where he was relevant for fantasy. Yeah, the the efficiency for Rashad White cannot be as bad as it was. I mean, it just would be nearly impossible. 5.8 yards per reception is abysmal. 3.7 yards per carry is abysmal. So his efficiency should go up. And as far as volume goes, even if they run a lot fewer plays without Tom Brady, which I would expect, without Leonard Fournette, his volume should be pretty assured. So if you're looking for a diamond in the rough, it is Rashad White. Can I ask a nonsensical question? I love it's, that. It's Saturday. If uh, if you wanted to get that yards per catch up, if you start juggling the ball, when is the catch actually counted? So let's say Tom Brady dropped it to you at the two yard pass, That's an and you just started. Question. You just started kind of like you don't whoa, have... whoa, 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 and then you catch it at the five yard line. Is that a five? Pretty sure yard. that doesn't make any – that's not depth of target. It's it's yards per reception. So it's like how many total yards receiving did you have divided by how many? I don't think it matters. Oh, that's right because because we're – yeah. Yeah, it's, you would but, – But the same question remains on average depth of catch. Yeah, catch. sure. Yeah. So would that – Yes, that would be how you pad your numbers is tap it to yourself further <laughs> down the field. Got it. Yeah, so Coaches I, love that. I told you it was nonsensical. Um, okay, so right now Mike Evans, seventh-round pick, Chris Godwin, fifth-round pick. To me, and in every mock draft we've done, I'm taking the lower guy. Uh, but you guys have not done that. You guys have been on the Godwin side. Um, it's a trap. <laughs> it's a, which look, one's the trap? Mike Evans is a trap, and and this Mike Evans won me a championship last year. A couple of them because how, week why? 17. But I'm telling you, last year, if you didn't personally experience like Mike Evans' numbers last year, seem fine. You know, you look at the season total. This is you go back to the truth about wide receivers series, and the, and the whole goal is like, well, this player might have finished. You know, he finishes with wide receiver sixteen. Did he help you? Oh my goodness, no. He was. I mean, he helped you win a championship if you had him in your lineup he in week you seventeen. A few times. He, here's the, I, I understand and relate to the to the net result of Evans' year last year, not truly helping you. But I also watched the games. Tom Brady retired. Tom Brady was atrocious. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady missed a wide open Mike Evans a lot last year. Tom Brady last year was Big Ben with the Steelers where he sucked. And then you're like, well, it can't get worse than sucky Big Ben. Oh, yes, it could. Oh, yes, it will. Tom Brady last year is better than what they have now. But I think I think I, I I'm only saying that not because that you might be right. That might be the case. But what I'm saying is, is that Mike Evans as a as an actual talent. You know. I don't think I saw a, a, a depression in on the field. I, I didn't see him right. decline in separation or in getting open down the field. He was missed frequently. He was a downfield target. Brady couldn't do that anymore. And now, do he's, you agree with that, Mike? Or, yes. or am I out of my no, mind? No, I'm, I'm in agreement. Um, I think that it, it's still going to be a very hot, cold type of a season for Mike Evans. But you're drafting him as currently. The wide receiver, 33. This is not you drafted Mike Evans. Where would where would he have gone last year? Fourth? Yeah, maybe maybe fifth round? So you're, your expectations are set much lower. And uh, for a player who's always had 1,000 yards every year of his career to be available in the seventh round because the concern about the quarterback is so strong. Like that's just it's fully baked into his ADP. That's and the part, I think that I'm I'm perfectly fine taking it. It was a seven game disaster for Evans last year. Because his first if you look at the season, his first nine weeks he was on pace for uh and that was with an injury mixed in. Almost uh, over thirteen hundred yards and seven touchdowns. 
So, you know, I just wonder if a seven, I I think it's not fair to Mike Evans to have a seven game stretch in his career for a guy that's finished that consistently with his baked in ADP being, you know, Mike well, Evans in the seventh round. Yeah, yeah. We're cr- this is crazy to me. We're uh, and and so I'm I'm happy at, that you're listening. You get both sides, right? You get the value on Mike Evans in the seventh round, a guy who's never not had a thousand yards, didn't look out like he lost it on the field. And if you think that's a value, take him. I'll be passing on him because Mike Evans is a seventy reception type of player, right? This isn't a, a consistent guy. This is a guy who has big plays, big games, and that's worked for most of his career because he's been a touchdown guy. I mean, he, he's, you know, you look back and it's like, okay, 14 touchdowns, 13 touchdowns, 8, 8, 12, 12. He, he's a monster for touchdowns. If those don't come, you end up with what you experienced last year. Last year, he had three games, I believe, yes, where he, he scored a touchdown. Yeah, three touchdowns in the first 17 weeks. Yeah, so. 16 weeks. Right, and then he had the three touchdown game in, yep. in week 17. And so you felt like when a guy like that, who's not a volume player, isn't getting the touchdowns, you end up with six fantasy points, five fantasy points, 6.8 fantasy points. You just end up with, like, I'm disappointed every week. So the question to me on a low-volume guy is, well, will the low-volume guy get touchdowns? And on this team, this version with this quarterback play, I don't think he gets touchdowns. But he can. So he was more consistent than Chris Godwin. He was 47% of his games he was giving you a meaningful fantasy performance. Godwin was at 41% over his last 17 games. So from a fantasy perspective, Godwin is not more assured than Mike Evans. He just feels safer because he'll be closer to the line of scrimmage for Baker Mayfield, and Baker Mayfield is going to take chances. If this was Jameis Winston, how would you feel? Oh, I'd feel great. See, I think Baker's going to throw the ball more than you think down the field. I think Baker will not be given time in the pocket to throw the ball downfield, just like Brady. I mean, this is a good debate, and that's what it is. We, We will see it on the field. I like the price for Evans. If I'm choosing between the two, I'm not spending two rounds earlier on Godwin personally because all your arguments I agree with in terms of the offense, not great, line, what's your running back, your tight end is you know another story. But why would I spend two rounds ahead if, if both guys were disappointments last year? That's the part that's hard for me. Right, and, and for me it's simply the fact that if, if both of these guys end up with four touchdowns on the season, I want the one who has 100 receptions instead of 70. Yeah, it's fair, but Mike Evans... reception is not going to be the same amount of yards. Mike Evans, Evans probably is, have more yards. is far more likely of the two to have eight-plus touchdowns. All right, Kate Otten. Sneaky? Yes. Mike loves Kate Otten. I don't no, blame no. him whatsoever. I don't, I don't love Kate Otten, but I love the fact that this is a starting tight end yep. who is being drafted as the tight end... 33? 42 receptions last year as a rookie. Jason, he's not a rookie anymore. You don't have to hate yeah, him by default. Second-year second tight ends are great. They're, it's a good bet to beat their ADP and to have their win tight ends break out. It's more it, – it's it's commonly in but year two now. But really what I'm getting out of this is there's like a Baker Mayfield poop smear across this whole team for you. Correct. For me, it's like do you want the third target in pecking order for Baker? Because I don't. But it's like like people are drafting Tyler Conklin. In front of K. Dot. Yeah, I've done it a million times. I, I'm, I'm pretty yeah, that, exposed that, to that one. I'm not, that one I'm not really opposed to. Really? Yeah, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, okay, but I mean, like, Conk Conk. Also, I want to yeah, be able to. Can you remember Conk Conk? Yeah, no, I, I want to be like, able to do that. Like, thank you. But I'm saying, like, Uzama is there as well. It's yeah. Just people are taking rookie Luke Musgrave for the Green Bay Packers over K. Dot. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't do that. I guess. You guys are crazy. No, no, no. no. I, I think he is. He's sneaky, but he's sneaky in the way that I don't really care that much. Uh, quick break. Right, well, back hold, with, hold on. Just okay. one. I want to throw out one name, and this is just this is. Oh the, yes. This is the name to monitor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is running back Sean Tucker yes. because the dude is good. Like he is a tremendously talented running back who unfortunately had really bad injury luck right as we were rolling into the draft. So that it ended up causing him to go completely undrafted, and he is still hurt right now. But look at what the depth chart is for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Of we're talking about Rashad White going as running back twenty-seven because you're like, well, he's he's there. Is he is Rashad White a good player? That's I think that's still up in the air as of right now. And Sean Tucker, can no, Sean Keish, Tucker play? What about Keyshawn Vaughn though? 
But it's yeah, I mean, like at this point, what year are we in Keyshawn Vaughn's career? Like four, and sounds right. And the guy still hasn't been able to get on the field. So I just want to, I want people to be paying attention to the name of Sean Tucker, see if he gets healthy and make and starts making some splashes in training camp, because then, then you really need to yes. move him on your radar. Keep him, keep him in mind. All right, moving on. Quick break. Back with the Panthers. All right, Carolina, last year, projected for six wins. This year, it's up to seven and a half. They won seven last year. Honestly, very impressive. Very impressive season for Steve Wilkes taking over from uh, Ja Rule. Matt Ja Rule. <laughs> uh, Murder. It didn't work. The Matt Rule era, 11 and 27. I mean, it worked for his bank. Yeah, I mean, he took a Cliff Kingsbury approach yeah. to the – I mean, he was made much worse, to be fair. I mean, uh, at least Kingsbury made the playoffs. But also had challenges, had Ben McAdoo as his offensive coordinator last year. Um, Self-inflicted challenges. Teddy Bridgewater, Cam Newton, Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, P.J. Walker. I mean, at the end, it was like I somebody knew get in there. Every play, he could have been swapping them every play. This year, Frank Reich takes over. This was not an impressive by the numbers fantasy team last year in terms of uh, points per game, pace of play, total yards, pass attempts, pass yards. They were at the bottom. But they were able to run the football last year. Um, they were number one in expected points per rush attempt inside the red zone. The running game in the offensive line at times last year was, to me, much must-watch television mm -hmm. because they everyone knew that passing the football wasn't an option and they imposed their will the way that like Seattle used to do it in the past. And I was honestly very impressed. Deonta Foreman and um, uh, Chuba. Chuba both had big games at times. Uh, and then this offseason, they, they lost DJ Moore in the trade to go up and get Bryce Young. They lost Deonta Foreman, but they added Miles Sanders. They added Adam Thielen and DJ Chark to the wide receiver room, Andy Dalton. I think a great depth. Depth. I, I, <laughs> that was a that was a deep fart. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, I think a great depth. Uh, I thought it was doing a like a Sylvester impression. Yeah. That was a full moment of Is like, did duck? everybody hear what I heard? <laughs> yep. That was a yeah. please yeah. tell me that no yeah, one reacts no. to oh, that. Yeah. No. no, no one's gonna hear about your depth. <laughs> Isn't that the best way to describe Andy Dalton though as a depth? Yeah, yeah sure. He's I mean, great he's depth good depth. depth. <laughs> Thumper and thug it actually. Oh boy! Happy Saturday. Uh, he added. It's, uh, it's hot it's, in here. It's Saturday. Yes. <laughs> it's very warm. Um, I need a Gooch fan. Can <laughs> That's we get the Gooch? Four. Oh yeah, we got we got two more. Two All more right. to work in. Let me we crank need up six. the Gooch fan. Uh, Hayden Hurst as well. Right. So, and they drafted Bryce Young and Jonathan Mingo. It's a reset on offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and John, uh, Frank Reich gives you some confidence that they're going to figure some things out. I am a big Bryce Young fan. I sure. believe I believe that. He will be capable of, um, not not a not a top half offense, but also not 29th in total yards, 29th in pass attempts. Like you're going to need to uh, utilize his arm, his IQ, not just hand the ball off all year long. So I know that rookie quarterbacks traditionally, I mean, there's been four since 2010 that have surpassed 4,000 yards, only three with 25 passing touchdowns, but. 3,800 and 23 touchdowns. I mean, I think that's in the cards for Bryce Young. It's, it's I, certainly possible. I really do. And there, so there'll be some production there. Where is it? Where's it going to be? <laughs> yeah, that that's a big question. Um, I do think that Hayden Hurst is a little bit undervalued. Not that I'm calling for Hayden Hurst to be a top 12 guy, but being drafted in the, the Cade Otten ranges, I will put it now, I think that he can outproduce that. For the wide receivers, it's it's very difficult because Adam Thielen is the – you usually follow the money. Let the management tell you who they like because of how much they've paid. But there is always a, a tax for bad teams to lure in players. And Adam Thielen, who is at the tail end of his career to get a three-year, $14 million guaranteed. Good is, for you, man. Yes. Yeah, congratulations to Mr. Thielen. But I mean, it's it's hard to look at anything that Thielen has done in the last four years and not say it has declined. 
every every single year. And I mean, you know, yards per catch has four years ago we were at thirteen point nine, twelve and a half, ten point eight, ten point two. He put yep. up he put up seventy receptions and just over seven hundred yards with that high powered Minnesota offense. I know Jefferson is taking a lot of it, but if you're the number two to Justin Jefferson, you should be able to put up some decent I've numbers. I've got no argument for Adam Thielen being a consistent force, but I will say he's there for hands and red zone. That's where he's been good. Like the red zone will be where he can contribute. Jonathan Mingo. Yeah, I like the player a lot. Uh, very talented, 6'2", 220, higher draft capital than expected. Second round pick, Ole Miss. Should have an early opportunity in this offense. And uh, he's somebody in dynasty leagues that maybe yes. you pay attention to uh, now and hopes for the connection to build between him and a rookie quarterback. DJ Chark, I mean, last year was was fine when he had opportunities, but I wouldn't expect a lot. So the the wide receiver room, Jason, this is uh, – Well, it's Terrace Marshall's room, right? Oh, I mean, don't, for, job. don't forget, <laughs> Terrace Marshall's there. Um, you're, you're right. It's, it's Adam Thielen, I think, as the one – probably Mingo and DJ Chark kind of splitting the next duties. T Terrace Marshall's there. I, and, and Hayden Hurst will probably be second in the team in targets. So, I, I you know, Bryce Young, if you want to take a bet on Bryce Young because you believe in the talent and you want to see if he scrambles and uses his legs at all in, in the NFL level and you're not sure where the targets are going to go, but they all count to him, I'm fine with that in best ball. I'm fine with Hayden Hurst in best ball because of how late he is and he should have more targets. I think it's just going to be a really inconsistent offense. If I'm taking a bet on offense here, it's definitely Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders should be the best friend to this rookie quarterback I, I think that they're going to try to have the running game open things up and make life easier for Bryce Young run the ball a lot we saw it last year Andy you talked about it how you knew they were going to run they still were able to run this is a great offensive line I don't know what's going on with look PFF you do great work love love your stuff but these offensive line grades are was happening you you have last year's Tampa Bay Buccaneers ahead of last year's Panthers I don't know what you were watching. Uh, same with this year's. And I, th this is an offensive line that um, can move people. So I like Miles Sanders. I think they'll use him more as a three-down back than a lot of other middle-tier running back selections in fantasy. So I'm in on Sanders, and then I'm kind of just letting everything else be fun to watch and not mine for fantasy with this offense. Quick thought on Sanders. I will mention it because I think we've been all very pro Miles Sanders as a value. He was on a really good offense last year. He had a lot of games where it was 16 opportunities, 18 opportunities, 21, 12, 13, 12, where they were disaster games mm -hmm. on a good offense. So he has been extremely hot and cold. He had nothing in the middle range. He was either very good last year or very bad. And um, I'm just throwing that out there because I – It's a bet on volume. It's a bet on me. volume, but it's going to be – he's not scoring 11 times probably. Yeah, so here's here's the thing about what happened last year with Miles Sanders. He was not throwing the ball. Jalen Hurts is not a uh, is going to check it down, doesn't throw to the running backs that much, and he was barely used in the passing game. And then you get around the goal line, and the number one goal line back in the league was Jalen Hurts. So you did have uh, enough touchdowns. And I, if you look back at Miles Sanders' games where it was like, oh, he had a great game for fantasy, eh, he got the touchdowns that, that game. And so I am hoping my bet on Miles Sanders isn't just volume, but it's really – almost exclusively about the pass catching work and that's a projection that's yeah, no he, guarantee he had 20 catches last year let's say you give him 50 yeah that's if you give him 50 heavy. which would be his peak he finishes as a running back what top 20 14 okay that's a above, I don't think he's above 80 50, um I, yeah, I, I, I think, think it's a little get ambitious 50 receptions I, think right. it, I wonder how much chuba will get worked in all right let's move on the saints seven and ten last season projected win total was eight this year it's up to 9.5. Uh, okay. You know, they were not a good offense last season. So there are this is nine and a half. That's the highest. Right? It's got to so be the, the Saints highest. are projected. Yes, they're the that. betting favorites. So Jamal Williams, Derek Carr, Foster Moreau, welcome in. Ingram, Landry, Dalton, see you later. Drafted Kendry Miller, who's starting on the um, inactive list, dealing with an injury. And uh, here we go. Derek Carr, the journey begins I have him the highest of the three of us at QB seventeen. I think, you know, nine seasons, believe it or not, in Las Vegas or Oakland slash Las Vegas, 
He was between quarterback 13 and 20 every year. I think he's in that range again. Um, and that, that comes down to having an elite pass catcher in Chris Olave, the return of Mike, uh, Mike Thomas, some tight ends that are going to contribute in Moreau and Juwan Johnson and Taysom Hill. So I think he's very – like, who would you rather have? Derek Carr or Bryce Young is about this year. Derek Carr. Okay. That's that's how I feel. Yeah. Now, Mike, I don't know if you have it ranked quite that way. I um, not, not necessarily. Actually, yes, fantasy. you do. You have him twenty-seven, twenty-eight, though. Yeah, but I'm I'm not really in on rookie quarterbacks and like an Anthony Richardson type of of archetype. Okay, take the bet. But otherwise, I'm you know shying away. And Derek Carr, I have him. He, I probably have him ranked much lower than he'll finish. But he, it's because all those guys. Once once you get to a certain range of quarterback, it's like add two touchdowns and this quarterback jumps 10 spots. So if, if his touchdown equity is a little more positive, then he'll be, he'll finish in that 13 to 20 range, but he's, he's not exciting. And there, it, I don't, I don't see a path for him to surpass what he has done for the Raiders. All right. So the, they're the favorites to win the division, albeit with the low win total. We like winning teams with running backs. Alvin Kamara, his legal situation has gotten a lot of clarity. We don't have a final answer on we don't suspension. Have, yeah. We need the NFL. It could be to talk. zero. It could be one. It could be two. It could be more. Um, it can go up to six. I think I've. I've I, seen, I think that would be a wild. I think I've seen. But he's saying it could. Right, right, right. Like they have within the, right. the within the rules, it, it's zero to six games. That's what's going to happen. And some of the legal fantasy people that I I follow and trust the most, they're kind of landing on four. I'd still be a little surprised if it's four, but uh, TBD. So, I, am I in that legal source that you're trusting? Uh no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Did Mike. you You didn't pass the bar, Mike. You're not in the list. I have not. You haven't attempted it. Yeah, you haven't yeah. failed the bar. Oh, oh you know, man! I was glass half to, full. I was starting to feel a little bit bad about myself and my yeah. situation, but I realize it's because I haven't even tried. That's right. I got you. You have not failed the bar. Uh, Excellent. Alvin Kamara, though, where he's being drafted, it's a bet that I think can really pay off. But I'm the one that I'm the only one that seems to think that our consensus rankings 27. I've got him at 22. That's ridiculously low for the history of Alvin Kamara. Not not that we would expect a return to where he was. But he, if this offense is more competent, more capable, it was Andy Dalton and Jameis Winston led last year. Like Derek Carr can move the offense more efficiently than those guys, and Alvin Kamara is, he's their best weapon still behind Chris Olave. Yeah, he he is. Um, I think what is happening, at least in, I think this is happening in the fantasy community, but I know this is happening in my heart. It's the combination of realizing that Alvin Kamara has become less and less efficient and he has lost a little step. He doesn't look like, you know, second year explosive Alvin Kamara. He's still great. Um, it's the combination of knowing that he's on the way down combined with the fear of the suspension that makes me kind of just want to avoid it. But that is probably a mistake because as much as I like uh, Ken Kendra Miller, and I think he's talented. I think he could, uh, by the end of the season, overtake the starting role. I, re I really do believe that could happen. Most likely, Alvin Kamara is the most talented player in that backfield. This offense will be probably the best one in the division. They'll win more games than others in the division. What's and the quickest path to relevance for a running back? Pass catching. Yeah, we've been talking about that a lot. And yeah. he, you know, he missed uh, some time last year. He still had 57 receptions. He still can catch the football. Josh Jacobs last year made his ascension because Derek Carr threw him the football a lot. We were sitting here going, man, Andy Dalton doesn't do it or Taysom Hill doesn't do it. Maybe Jamie Swinston will do it. I think that's the bet. The bet no, is I, that Derek Carr will throw the football to one of the more talented receivers. I believe you are correct. And <laughs> I'm going to move Alvin Kamara up a little bit. And I did pass the bar. What? Oh, yeah. Mike, you're yeah. a loser again. Unfortunately, it was the oh. uh, Alaskan State Bar, and I can only practice up there. Oh. But I do go up from time to time. Still pretty cool. Yeah. A lot of moose law up there. There's a lot of moose law. Yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks, Mike. Yeah. Um, Jamal Williams, right now being drafted eight spots behind Alvin Kamara. We are attracted to 17 rushing touchdowns. I don't know if we're attracted to anything other than his personality beyond the touchdowns because no. 
He's not very good. No, there's no reason. He's just really good around the goal line. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm like O-U-T on Jamal Williams. I love the dude. Obviously, we know he can get it done. He just had 17 touchdowns. But when I look at it, I want the pass catching of Kamara or I want the actual athletic youth explosiveness to take over of Kendra Miller. When Kendra Miller got added to this team, it was like, oh, Jamal Williams, you're dead to me from what, a fantasy perspective. What, what about the the famous four-week rental policy? Because Kendra Miller's probably not established in being used early in the season. That doesn't generally happen, especially coming off an injury. Jamal Williams was paid money by this team. And if Kamara were to miss four games, like you said, you get to start the year, Tennessee, Carolina, Green Bay. Could Jamal Williams end up like last year as a, a top 10 running back just for the first three weeks? It's it's certainly possible. And it, once once we get the word for Alvin Kamara from the NFL, get the official, is it zero? Where does it end? If it's four, Jamal Williams, his ADP will – that's true. will rise That's substantially, true. but if I mean if you're doing best ball right now, uh it's it's tough. It's tough because it's to me this isn't like Samaj P Ryan where I I see a chance that Samaj P Ryan is really integral the entire year for the Denver Broncos as Javante is trying to get back from the injury. Jamal would be a month rental. And because I think that what's a month rental worth at the running back position and in the ninth round, I think that's a little too, that might be a little too rich the, for me. The thing for me, Maybe. it's it's still one of those things where if I were to, you give me a $100 bill and I've got to place a bet, I got to put it on Jamal Williams. Or I got to put it on Kendra Miller. I'm going to put it on Kendra Miller. And it's not necessarily because I think he has the higher odds. It's because he's going to have the better payout. Should both hit, Kendra Miller will be worth more. I'll get more return on that $100 than I would on Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams might fall into the end zone a couple times, but I just don't see him being otherworldly. And then when Alvin Kamara gets back and as the season progresses, um, you know, will so th that's where if I'm making the non-Alvin Kamara bet, I'm I'm moving towards Kendra Miller. I'm going to believe what we saw, Mike. Yeah. yeah no, but what I'm, is that? What is it? How, what happens? Like they paid Jamal Williams. Alvin Kamara is going to play football. How does how does Kendra Miller is, is just injury? Is how do, how do, how does he go? How does he pass both those guys to the point where that ticket pays off? As opposed to like Jamal Williams is taking the guaranteed payout for the first three weeks, but you don't get it anymore. Whereas Kendra Miller, what is the payoff? Like the, how does that the, happen? The payoff is. Yeah, uh, Kamara gets Peterson, and mm -hmm. where the rookie year, Kamara was, I think third on the depth chart. I don't. You do it, not want to get it was Peterson. No, you no, don't want to no, get you Peterson. don't. Yeah, uh, it was it was Adrian Peterson, Mark Ingram, and then Alvin okay. Kamara was third on the depth chart his rookie year. And then by you know, so the, he, after the first month, his or path so, is Kamara's path. Yes, Correct. got it. Chris Olave. Looking at all rookie wide receivers since 2014, yes, the answer. <laughs> only Tyreek Hill had a higher target per out run than Olave. Yes. <laughs> I, I agree with your statement. Chris Olave has... I'm, Sir, that was not a question. I'm going to say something here. Chris Olave has number one overall potential. I, I like it. I like it. Wow. Not, no, he does Yes, he does. Yes, I don't does. like it. <laughs> I love it. I, I'm not... Obviously, it's Really? Not a, yes, I believe that. Yeah, I believe he has number one overall potential. Um, I, I'm not predicting that. I'm not predicting number one, but we always talk about range of outcomes. I think that's true because I think he could score 15 times. I mean, I, I genuinely think that could happen in this offense. I mean, Derek Carr is a good deep ball thrower. Chris Olave's on film yeah. last year. Unbelievable. Yep. When he was given opportunities from Jameis, Olave was coming through with deep receptions, and then Andy Dalton's like, no. I don't do that. Chris Olave last year, if you take if if he hadn't gotten injured, he would be getting he would have got greater than year. Garrett Wilson pub this year. That's my only point. And so do you think Garrett Wilson has that potential? I think we would say yeah. yeah. I think we yeah. would say yeah. So is it number one? Is it top three? Is it top five? Whatever. Olave is that talented and that discounted at wide receiver thirteen. So I like the price. I'm happy with the price. I'd spend it. Um it, it's a dependent bet on Derek Carr. No one likes that. No one wants to go down and hey, be like, you Derek, know. Derek Carr gives, almost always, Derek Carr gives us one elite fantasy option. I I love betting on Olave because there's nothing he can't do. Do you love it? I, 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 I love it. I openly passed on that joke. Like I, It was in the brain. 
It went out. I was like, I'm out. Hey, you, and I, you and made Mike, a mistake. Mike stepped up. You made a you made a big mistake. <laughs> you and, all love him. Oh, I love him. <laughs> um, the he he is an exceptional route runner. Great hands incredible speed like like you know he's he's got world beater speed there's nothing to not like about him so i i don't i don't have a problem with you saying that you think he's got number one overall potential but for that to happen you also have for that to be in the range of outcomes two things have to happen Derek carr's got to be good which that 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 can be okay i mean he supported Devonte adams last year but also michael thomas has got to be done or injured or he, michael thomas can't come and be a 140 target type of player or a 130 target type of player and have chris olave be i just you know also a 150 target player for sure and i like the beginning of the sentence where you stated michael I thomas love you, him. no not that part <laughs> where you stated michael thomas can't be a 140 target player cuz i i believe that statement is true okay I yeah, don't think that's in probably. his range of outcomes anymore. Um, he, he's going to be th – he's over 30 at this point in time. He can still help the offense. Of course. And you're going to need that. I mean, you have to have somebody be productive. Landry was a compliment to Olave last year. I mean, there were there were options. But what is the ceiling of the current wide receiver 44 and ADP Michael Thomas? Where, where Can he get to 20? I think he can be a top 30 guy. Uh, like he was coming, I mean, it was only two weeks, right? What, what did yeah, we have? The first for two weeks, he was great. He was the wide receiver eight, wide receiver 18. And it, it was, it was touchdowns. It was though, touchdowns. Right? Yeah, three touchdowns in two weeks. But it's still, he was coming in and getting, you know, five a, for 57. Decent target share. I think that Michael Thomas is a, I'm okay with the Michael Thomas bet. As not trying to, is that, well, I got Michael Thomas here. I'm going to get a top 12 wide receiver, but get someone You're not who, paying for that. but get someone who helps your team. Like, Teams, fantasy football teams need wide receiver threes and fours. And Michael Thomas, I think, is a is 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 someone that I'm I want to bet on to be the fourth what, wide receiver on my team. Forty four wide receiver, forty four in the ninth. Okay, All right. I was trying to figure out what some guys around that range. Jamal Williams. <laughs> yeah, give me Michael <laughs> Thomas. I'll pull up some ADP here. Or you just want the wide receiver position? Yeah, just I'm just curious some names around there to see okay. how much I actually believe in him. So Michael Thomas, other wide receivers, Gabe Davis is going right before him. And I'll take that shot. You you'll take the shot on Gabe Davis? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Uh Juju Smith Schuster right behind him. Uh, you can give me Michael Thomas on that one. I think that is correct. Zay Flowers. Uh give me Zay. Yeah, okay. that one's that one's tough. Cortland Sutton somehow is there. Uh Rashad Bateman. Yeah, or I'm Michael probably Thomas. Uh, Bateman, and then Jamison Williams. That's wild with a with a known six game suspension in the tenth round. What I oh, think he man. is that good though, Jamison. Yeah, okay. um, we didn't talk a lot about him, but I do I do think that's a really tough situation for fantasy players because it's a hold. You got to hold him through the suspension. Yes. Um, but but that the second half of the year with that team that we were talking about yesterday, I don't know. All right, where's the gold at tight end? Give me a couple. <sighs> Seconds. It's, of, the goal to tight end is going to be Taysom Hill. Not, I I liked Juwan Johnson quite a bit until they signed Foster Moreau. Foster Moreau has a connection with uh, Derek Carr. Yeah, they have a history. I think Foster Moreau is pretty good. I think Juwan Johnson is pretty good. If you're telling me they're splitting between each other behind Michael Thomas and Chris Olave, I am completely out on fantasy. Uh, you can grab them in best ball and hope you get a touchdown here or there. They will have some service, but you can't rely on either of them. So if you're taking the gold, it's Taysom Hill, who's There's not some, a tight end. Some gold in them. them but he, them Hill? He'll oh. be a... Uh, oh, uh, oh, man. <laughs> you passed on the Olave joke for that one? I was just... It was actually Jeremy's joke. Oh, oh so okay. it's not your joke. No, I would never... Okay. Well, then we can say how bad it was. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so... Uh, but that, I mean, you, you know, he could. Throw I would have taken credit if I got good reception. <laughs> Tell you that right now. You're darn right, you would. Yeah, I would have. You're a smart man. Um, <laughs> would have been my joke. You know, there, there's just very few people that can at the tight end position go and put up a 20 point game, and Taysom Hill's one of them. So for best ball right now, I actually like him. He's completely yes. undervalued, and you don't have to decide which games he's getting to touch. I mean, like he'll have probably more than one game this season with two touchdowns. There's not a lot of tight ends you could say that about, so I would take gold there. But for the most part, there's not. There's not, it, the mine's pretty empty. Okay, the Falcons yeah. seven and ten last year, final team to break down in this division. They've been bet up to eight and a half. 
and they were a five and a half win total team last season. That puts them number two in the division, I believe, right? Uh, eight and a half eight. should put them at two. Let me just double check that. Yeah, they have the second highest odds to win the division right now. Okay. Confirmed. I called some of my Alaskan lawyer, <laughs> lawyer friends, and they confirmed it. Um, they were in a ton of one-score games. They ran the football like crazy. Number one in rushing attempts. Number one in rushing attempt team drafts B. John Robinson. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's – Jason was excited. Yes, I was. Um, number three in rushing yards. And they said, let's get somebody that's better than anybody we even have, and let's go back to the well with that. They don't have a quarterback that is proven in the passing game, so the running game is going to be the recipe. They – Brought in Taylor Heineke, a serviceable backup, which is nice to have in case it doesn't work out with Ritter because I feel like Heineke could come in with a run-first offense mm -hmm. and execute. Uh, oh, so, Arthur. So, <laughs> yeah. Arthur B has a plan. Bijan's the biggest story from this team, and to have them projected for that kind of a win total, you know, you've got them at RB4. Yeah, we. I mean, we've seen Arthur Smith within a... Uh, we've seen Arthur Smith with an elite, one of the best running backs in the NFL when he had Derrick Henry, and he said, this is your team, This our identity is you, we're going to let you... It's what got him this job. Yeah, we're going to let you carry us. They have been very good at running the ball, I mean, exceptional, even with, uh, you know, Tyler Algier, he's pretty good, um, you know, but he's not Bijan, and they are going to make this team about Bijan. I think it will open up things for them in the passing game, the way that... Um, for the Titans when he was there, you know, the Titans were always one of the most efficient red zone scoring teams. And it wasn't just because of Derrick Henry. Some of that was in the passing game because it's tough when you know that you've got a superstar running back that can just flat out beat you. You you are really focused on that part of the game and efficiency can go up elsewhere, which is why, you know, I love the consolidation of this offense. And my biggest fears are that Cordero Patterson and Tyler Algier and some of these other players will work in more because if it can be really a, a situation where it's it's Bijan, Drake London, and Kyle Pitts, just Bijan, Drake London, and Kyle Pitts, Bijan, Drake London, and Kyle Pitts, and that's this into existence? I, I am, but I'm just saying the consolidation between He's got those the three, candles out and the seance, <laughs> those <laughs> three elite it's the weapons. Secret. It is it is a scary proposition because last year we had so many times in the running back room, and mind you, it wasn't Bijan, we were like, oh, this is weird. This is a Caleb Huntley game out of nowhere. Oh, this is weird. Like, you know, Cordero was supposed to be the guy, and then it became – like, Cordero was supposed to be the guy, and it became right. Algier, and you I, know? And I don't think that happens. I don't – because the, when you invest what you've invested in Bijan – Yeah, it's very unlikely, but there would, may be plays that you're frustrated with. It would make a bad NFL decision just way worse. If you, if you spent that equity on a running back – and then used a platoon. It oh get man. Huntley in oh, here. Man. I think platoon's too strong of a word. I but, would lose my mind. But like Tyler Ajir, like you said, he broke the the team rookie record. He didn't just do that. Back. His last four games of the year, he was on pace for eighteen hundred yards at five and a half a clip. He's good. And so, I don't think platoon's the right word. But occasional surprises, a red zone handoff, a third down, or a play that you're not expecting. That kind of stuff is going to crop up, and it's not going to be enough to make you regret drafting Bijan. It's just going to be the dynamic of a team that runs the ball more than everybody. If you run the ball more than everybody, like you, you brought up Derrick Henry. I hate to say this to you because I don't know if you can handle it, okay. but Bijan is not physically what Derrick Henry is. I can handle it. Okay, and you agree? Yeah, because he's an exceptional pass catcher and he's way better. Uh, Go on. <laughs> physically, he's smaller. <laughs> physically, he may not be able to hold up to the same. They may not want to give him the same level of of punishment. I wouldn't. If I drafted Bijan, I don't punish this guy well, that's year one into the entire equation when I have a thousand yard rusher that I can use with him. Sure. And handing the ball to Derrick Henry is not punishing him. Right. It's punishing. It's the punishing defense. everybody else. That's that's exactly right. So, uh, you know, the defense was a great last year. You you hope that this team can become an efficient, consolidated offense. That would give Drake London hope. That would give Kyle Pitts hope. A bet on London and Pitts, unfortunately, like it was last year, a bet on Mariota and Ritter. This year it's a bet on Ritter and Heineke. So Kyle Pitts is not being drafted where he was last year. He's a fifth-round draft pick. Drake London, 
a fifth round draft pick. They're basically back to back. If you are sitting there and you don't have a tight end and you need a wide receiver, which one are you taking? They're being drafted together. I'm going after Kyle Pitts. Um, the he is as good as Drake London as a receiver, and he plays tight end. Um, I've obviously been out on Kyle Pitts the last two seasons, but I believe you know rookie year was because he was a rookie. Um, sophomore year was because of his cost. He was you know people be drafting him in the second round. This year he is. You know, I get him in the sixth round all the time. If he's in the sixth, I pretty and I don't and I don't have Mark Andrews. I pretty much take a shot on Kyle Pitts because I don't think there's a world where he just sucks, uh, where he's just terrible and a complete waste of a sixth round pick. But I do think the world exists. You don't see the world that existed last year. No, I you, I, you can't I, see last year. I I know you experienced it firsthand. You have those. Well, I'm just saying that scars. world. I do see that world because it literally <laughs> happened. It ha happened with a different quarterback, and maybe Ritter is worse than Mariota last year. But I remember watching the film. It also happened with uh, the other quarterback he had. Well, he he had Which a thousand yards. That would be Matt Ryan with Matt. He had oh, over. He, he was great. He had over a thousand yards. He just didn't have touchdowns, so that killed him for fantasy. Last year, Kyle Pitts at the tight end position had the highest percentage of uncatchable passes, which is, if you go back and watch any Falcons games, it's it's very frustrating. And sure. He's got the same head Des, coach Des, that frustrated us last year with the route calls yes. and the choices. Yes, but there's there were many plays where it was just it was Mariota's fault, 100% missing Kyle Pitts. Maybe Desmond Ritter is no better than Marcus Mariota, but I... Think it's I think it's worth the bet, and you also, Andy, you mentioned you have the safety net of of Taylor Heineke. Should they get through those first few weeks and and realize Desmond Ritter is that it, it's not the future, it's not going to happen. Heineke can get it done for for Kyle Pitts to return a fifth round value. Breaking news! Oh no, what do we got? Vikings first round wide receiver Jordan Addison was pulled over early this morning for driving his Lamborghini at 140 miles an hour. 140? Go, go, go goose! Uh, 140 in a, and a 55. Well, oh. he can't drive 55. Uh, mm. no, he can't. Uh, no, sorry. no, 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 we don't. Jordan, what are you doing, man? This reckless driving, citation for speeding. Uh, so wait, he <laughs> hold on. One, he, didn't, he didn't get arrested? 140 in a 55. And I, look. Just after wow. 3 a.m. So. We, we've been here with another wide receiver, and, yep. and it didn't end well. I don't, who was it? Well, that one was, that one was, uh, in, he was intoxicated. Uh, well, yeah. I'm just saying, it, if you yeah, go at that yeah, speed, yeah. You're, in, you're in trouble, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, not good. That's not. Come on, I honestly, man. when this news came through just now, I thought it was related to the injury that we don't know about. So Ooh, that's 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 uh, that's let, unsafe. So come just, on, people. So some, something uh, probably not endearing himself to the team at that exact moment in no. time. All right, let's break the division winner down. Who do you think takes this division? I actually think it's a really tough one to predict. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm gonna I go. I know my number one. Let's let's go one at a time. Okay. Well, no, that makes it confusing after the beginning. So well, I'm going to go uh, – I think Atlanta wins the division. I think Atlanta wins the division. I think the Saints are second. I think Panthers are third. I think Tampa's fourth. I, I, I went back and forth with those first two, so I'm almost exactly what you are at. But I have the Saints winning, Falcons second, Panthers third, and the Bucks last. I will go Falcons, Saints, Bucks, Panthers. Okay. All right. That'll do it for today's Saturday edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit available right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Back with you Tuesday. See you later. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.